I'm happy to introduce you uh, Dr. Agata. She's coming from Bialystok uh, University of Technology in, in Poland. She's also in the, in the Faculty of Civil Engineering and Environmental Science and the Department of Chemistry, Biology and Biotechnology. Uh, Dr. Agata is involved in, in, in research uh, with the use of new methods for the identification of properties of pesticides. For instance, he was involved in the identification of estrogenic properties of some fungicides, and she is also involved in the, in the assessment of some products from plants yes. uh, for the mitigation of the toxicity of some pesticides. And, and you will get uh, some information from her research on the use of these uh, methods for the identification of this uh, toxicity and, and okay, some, some results that she will be uh, telling you soon. So uh, please, Agatha, the, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, so uh, I'm from Poland, from the uh, Białystok Uni, uh, University of Technology. I work uh, at the Department of Chemistry, Biology and Biotechnology. And what I would like to uh, tell you today is a few things about pesticides because uh, research in our department are focused mainly on uh, pesticides toxicity. So I would like to start with uh, some brief introduction uh, with the pesticides as you for sure all know. Uh, pesticides are being used for uh, the protection of plants and plant products and they are utilized by various branches of industry. However, they are still recognized as uh, toxic and hazardous compounds. Pesticides undergo strict control on their application, uh, however, they uh, still uh, pose a serious risk uh, that they will contaminate water, soil and food. Unfortunately, according to the data, uh, annual consumption of pesticides uh, in the European Union uh, did not decrease during uh, a large 10-year uh, study. Uh, pesticides, according to the definition, should be toxic to pests However, at the same time, they should exhibit rather low toxicity toward human and other non-target organisms. And they should have an ability to undergo biodegradation. Pesticides can be classified into uh, different groups according to different classification. A uh, very popular classification is based on the target organisms and pesticides can be classified into fungicides, uh, which are being used uh, for controlling fungi, herbicides for weed control and other uh, many other groups. Pesticides can be also classified based on their chemical structure into two main groups, uh, non-organic and organic pesticides. Pesticides are commonly used uh, in agriculture programs, however, they cause environmental pollution and health hazard. According to the data, and, uh, the pesticides are a reason of uh, severe and chronic toxicity in humans. Uh, pesticides exposure may uh, occur through different ways. Uh, one which is the most, I think the most important because um, we are all exposed through this way by, uh, to pesticides because we all eat and drink is the exposition through the gastrointestinal tract. And uh, this exposition occurs because of the presence of pesticides and pesticide residues in food and water. And because of the usage of pesticides not only during uh, crop production but also during food storage. In the European Union, more than a half of vegetables, fruit and cereals are contaminated with uh, pesticides and pesticides break down products. The other ways, um, also important, but especially important for people who work with pesticides, uh, is the exposition through the respiratory tract and through the skin. And this is direct exposure, which occurs uh, while mixing, loading and spraying of pesticides. 
Uh, according to the uh, WHO definition, pesticide uh, residue in food is a sum of chemical compounds present in food products as a result of pesticide usage. And maximum residue levels of pesticides are defined for certain food products and food ingredients uh, and the values are expressed as a milligram per kilogram for the product. Of course, you may find a lot of legal acts regarding uh, the um, levels of pesticides present in food. As the toxic chemicals, pesticides, uh, become uh, an integral part of the ecosystems, but they are hazardous to non-target organisms, including people and uh, other organisms. However, their influence, especially at the molecular level, is uh, not yet well studied. Laboratory research, also the research uh, that we conduct in our department, are concerning on the explanation of the mechanisms by which pesticides have the impact on human metabolism, uh, also by inducing an increased level of oxidative stress and free radi radical generation. As you probably all know, oxidative stress is a major cause of uh, many diseases, for example, different types of cancer, diabetes, uh, many diseases connected with the inflammation, autoimmune diseases and aging of the organisms. Oxidative stress is, um, can be defined as a kind of imbalance between an increased level of reactive species and a reduction in physiological antioxidant defense against them. And prooxidants are uh, endobiotic or xenobiotics that induce oxidative stress by the generation of uh, free radicals or by the inhibition of antioxidant system. Prooxidants uh, can be classified into two main groups, exogenous and endogenous. To the group of exogenous prooxidants, we may include, for example, pathogens such as virus, bacteria, fungi, parasites, some dietary ingredients, mainly highly preceded food, and of course, environmental pollution uh, and pesticides among the uh, pol environmental pollutants. Uh, there is also a group of endogenous uh, prooxidants, which include uh, some products of cellular metabolism and drug metabolites and others. Free radicals uh, are um, compounds, are structures, molecules with one or more unpaired electron and uh, therefore, because of this one or more unpaired electrons, they are extremely unstable and very highly reactive. And because of this uh, reactivity, uh, they attack molecules to obtain electron and this causes um, damage to important uh, macromolecules such as proteins, carbohydrates, lipids and nucleic acids. In normal physiological conditions, uh, free radicals are also necessary for our organism, uh, for our cells to proliferate, because normal um, level of uh, free radicals uh, acts as a stimulant of cell proliferation. However, an excess of free radicals is for us uh, dangerous. Sources of free radicals uh, in our life are industrial chemicals, rays, cigarette smoking, ozone, air pollutants, certain drugs and, of course, pesticides which are present in food and water. Uh, like I said, um, oxidative stress is an imbalance between prooxidants and antioxidants. So antioxidants are compounds that delay or inhibit oxidative damage because they are stable enough to neutralize free radicals by donating electrons. And um, a lot of examples of antioxidants are uh, in uh, especially fruits and vegetables. Antioxidants can also be classified into two groups. The first group uh, include enzymatic antioxidant systems and the second group is non-enzymatic antioxidant system. Uh, into the first group we can include enzymes uh, which act as antioxidants and these enzymes are for example glutathione reductase, catalase, selenium containing glutathione peroxidase or different types of superoxide dismutases. These are uh, mainly high molecular weight uh, antioxidants. 
To the group of non-enzymatic antioxidants, we include many low molecular weight uh, compounds such as glutathione, tocopherol, flavonoids or other compounds. Oxidative stress markers, which are um, under study also in our department, are mainly lipid peroxidation, protein oxidation, DNA oxidation. And as a result of protein oxidation, uh, protein biological activity can be reduced or increased or modified or completely lost. We also study uh, in our department the uh, level of uh, changing levels of glutathione, which is the most important thiol buffer, uh, which main function is to keep the thiol group in proteins in a reduced state. It's a compound, very small but very important compound, uh, which uh, regenerates antioxidants. We also study the process of lipid peroxidation, which is cascade process of the oxidation of unsaturated fatty acids. And this process provides continuous supply of free radical and it contains three stages, initiation, <laughs> propagation and the termination of lipid peroxidation. Uh, and uh, of course, DNA oxidation, which is the process um, in which DNA strand breaks, uh, occurs the formation of adducts, occurs the damage of sugar moieties and crack formation in nucleic acid uh, strands and uh, of course uh, occurs the production of DNA protein cross-linking. Pesticides, according to uh, the literature data, are uh, inducers of oxidative stress. And different uh, groups of pesticides are inducers of oxidative stress. In our department, we are focused uh, on pesticide pesticides from these three groups, insecticides, fungicides and herbicides. We started uh, our um, experiments with the herbicides. Now uh, we continue with fungicides and insecticides. Uh, pesticides cause changes in oxidative stress parameters and uh, they are hazardous endocrine disrupting compounds. Uh, however, the influence on human metabolism, uh, especially at the cellular level, is still not precisely defined. Uh, pesticides were detected even in human placenta, causing oxidative stress and, uh, and uh, lower birth weight, for example. In farmers and pregnant women, uh, pesticides uh, cause lipid peroxidation and DNA damage. Uh, and the research conducted uh, with using pesticides on mammals are very scarce because of uh, bioethical problems mainly. Therefore, uh, studies using human cell lines uh, are now becoming more widely conducted uh, because there are no, almost no uh, ethical problems uh, connected with uh, such a biological model. And, and now I would like to tell you some things about uh, our research and uh, our um, experiments that we are doing in our uh, department. We, uh, like I uh, said before, uh, we started our experiments uh, with the uh, herbicides, uh, these four herbicides, uh, Bifenox, Mesotrion, MCPA and Dichlobanil were selected because of uh, two reasons uh, for the study, because of the lack of information regarding their toxicity at the molecular level. And the second reason is that uh, these um, pesticides are um, widely used in Poland in our region. And uh, we uh, started our um, experiments uh, with choosing four pesticides and three different breast cancer cell lines and one normal breast cancer cell line. Because uh, all of the research that I will present today are um, conducted in a biological model which uh, is um, which are cell lines, different cell lines. We work um, mainly in uh, different cancer cell lines, but also on uh, normal healthy cells as a, um, for, for compare the results. So for this study, uh, we, uh, we decided to choose uh, three different breast cancer cell lines, estrogen dependent and estrogen independent, and to compare normal breast cancer cell line, which was derived from normal healthy breast tissue. Uh, 
and uh, we conducted MTT uh, assay which is a um, basic um, cytotoxicity assay and here I would like to present some results that we obtain uh, for the first uh, cell line which is very popular uh, breast cancer cell line MCF7 cells which is estrogen dependent cell line and we exposed uh, this, um, this cell line uh, into graded concentrations of four pesticides. Uh, here we have MCPA, uh, mesotrion, bifenox and uh, diclobanil for um, two treatment, uh, two times of incubations, 24 hours of incubation and 48 hours of incubation. And we, uh, what we found out that um, a relative cell viability uh, was uh, very uh, very high under the influence of pesticides. The results that we obtained, especially uh, after 48 hour treatment, uh, almost in every uh, studied pesticide, um, are statistically significant. Increases are statistically significant as compared to control non-treated cells. Control are um, expressed as a 100%. Uh, they are not treated cells and we uh, compare the uh, relative cell viability to, to the control non-treated cells. So uh, in case of um, the uh, estrogen dependent cell line, we obtained a statistically significant increases in relative cell viability. The second uh, cell line uh, breast cancer is MDA MB231 uh, cell line, which is estrogen independent uh, cell line. And what we can see here also, we uh, obtain some uh, increases in relative cell viability, however, they were not as high as in case of estrogen dependent cell line. So the response uh, from the cells was not as strong as we expected. A uh, third cell line uh, is also estrogen dependent cell line and here we can see uh, that the increases under the influence of studied pesticides is, um, is the response is very strong similarly like in the first <coughs> sorry cell line uh, so we can see uh, increases both uh, in 24 hour time of incubation and 48 hour time of incubation for different pesticides. Just to compare, uh, we did some research in uh, normal healthy cells. This is um, MCF uh, 12A uh, cell line, which is, these are the cells that are derived from normal healthy breast tissue. And what we could, uh, what we can see here, uh, there is almost no response for um, for the studied pesticides. Only uh, really high concentrations, uh, the highest studied concentrations of pesticides, uh, were cytotoxic to uh, to those cells. Uh, because of the interesting results, we decided to uh, go more into this uh, topic and to conduct more research um, on um, two uh, of the selected pesticides, bifenox and diclobanil. So we decided to conduct uh, research um, to, to check uh, antimicrobial activity of those uh, pesticides against selected pathogenic bacteria and uh, one fungi strain with the use of MTT assay. Uh, we did some uh, ecotoxicity <coughs> analysis with the use of Olivibre fischeri luminescent bacteria with the use of microtox. Uh, of course, we did a cytotoxicity analysis <coughs> with the use of breast cancer cell line, uh, estrogen dependent one. And on this cell line, we did uh, research uh, regarding apoptosis uh, and uh, regarding oxidative stress parameters. What we found out here, uh, we can see the results from the uh, microtox. And our conclusions are that bifenox was characterized by the significantly higher toxicity than diclobanil. And we conclude that this pesticide is very toxic to aquatic life with long-term effects. 
Uh, here we can see the results uh, from uh, antimicrobial assays, um, MTT assays conducted in uh, uh, Shirhia coli, Pseudomonas aeruginosa and Candida albicans. Uh, so in case of uh, the exposition of uh, the first strain to be phenox in uh, three times of incubation 24 hour 48 hour and 72 hour uh, after 72 hour incubation we saw uh, decreases in relative cell viability in case of pseudomonas the results are mm, completely different statistically significant increases we can see uh, in a relative cell viability of uh, this uh, pathogenic bacteria, especially after 48 and 72 hours of incubation. In case of fungi strain Candida albicans, we can see increases, statistically significant increases in relative cell viability um, only uh, after uh, 72 hours of incubation. Uh, we did the same uh, uh, assays, we conducted the same assays for Dichlobanil, also for 24, 48 and 72 hours of incubation. Uh, we can see almost no response in case of Escherichia coli. However, in case of Pseudomonas, after uh, 72 hours of treatment, we can see uh, uh, increases in relative cell viability. Uh, in case of fungi, we almost we cannot see any significant results. Like I said, uh, we also studied apoptosis process in uh, human breast cancer cell uh, cells, estrogen dependent cells. Uh, we um, compared the results with the cytotoxicity results um, because we found out that those pesticides they stimulate breast cancer cells grow. So, uh, um, as a confirmation, we can see here that uh, almost no apoptosis were detected in uh, cancer cells under the influence of selected concentrations of bifenox and dichlobanil. Uh, for, the, um, for the analysis of apoptosis, we conducted the analysis of activity of caspases 3, 7 and 9. And also to, uh, to confirm the results, we uh, did some uh, flow cytometry analysis uh, of apoptosis. Uh, of course, we did some research in uh, basic uh, oxidative stress parameters um, in um, breast cancer cells under the influence of uh, two uh, pesticides. One we, what we can see here <coughs> in the first graph, we can see uh, free radicals reactive oxygen species uh, level um, under the influence of pesticides, which is uh, stimulated and the results are statistically significant and those results can be correlated with the um, cytotoxicity assay because, as you probably know, uh, the level of oxidative stress in cancer cells is uh, rather high, so they need a lot of um, free radicals, reactive oxygen species to stimulate their proliferation. So uh, we can see an increase in the proliferation and at the same time an increase uh, in the level of mm, reactive oxygen species. Uh, also, we studied lipid peroxidation or, uh, under the influence of uh, bifenox and dichlobanil in uh, two selected concentrations each and we also saw an, in an increase, increases in uh, uh, higher uh, concentrations of uh, pesticides which are <coughs> statistically significant and and we studied uh, the ratio of reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione and we see uh, here uh, decreases under the influence of um, of pesticides uh, which can be correlated uh, with the TL group content which is also decreased under the influence of, uh, of pesticides. We also did some uh, microscopic analysis. Uh, you can see here apoptotic cells um, which are red cells and normal healthy cells which are green and of course under the influence of pesticides uh, the level, the amount of apoptotic cells is uh, significantly lower than in control. 
we did some statistical analysis and we found out uh, that, for example, bifenox activity is especially correlated with um, caspases activity and with the ratio of uh, reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione. Uh, we went more into um, this uh, topic and we did also some research uh, regarding two herbicides. Um, MCPA and sulfosulfuron, which are very popular in Poland, especially in our region. And we studied the effect of those two, uh, those two pesticides uh, in MCF7 breast cancer cell lines. Uh, we added those compounds to cell uh, culture for final concentration range in uh, selected concentrations of um, pesticides. And we did some research on uh, the toxicity, cytotoxicity of compounds. Uh, we did some apoptosis assay, so viability assay, uh, and we analyzed um, um, oxidative stress parameters also. What are the results? And uh, we can see that under the influence of um, those pesticides, we can see statistically significant increases in cell viability for both pesticides, uh, MCPA and sulfosulfuron. Um, breast cancer cells are stimulated by um, those pesticides. Uh, in case of apoptosis, we can see increases, however, they are statistically insignificant. And uh, in case of oxidative stress, um, what we can see here that uh, the amount of, um, of aldehyde, malondialdehyde, uh, is increased um, in, uh, under the influence of especially uh, sulfosulfuron. Uh, the increases are statistically uh, significant uh, as compared to control non-treated cells. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we can see that uh, TR group content is um, significantly decreased. The results are also statistically significant. We can see it decreases in uh, TR group content, which is um, correlated with the decreases in uh, the amount in the ratio of uh, reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione. Uh, both of the studied um, pesticides induced a significant uh, decrease in the amount of uh, reduced glutathione. Uh, the results uh, of the lipid peroxidation uh, can be correlated with the results obtained for the amount of uh, reactive oxygen species, uh, which uh, is uh, increased uh, under the influence of uh, both pesticides as compared to control untreated uh, cells. So, um, we saw that uh, the pesticides are so cytotoxic, they influence um, toxic effects on uh, the uh, cells, they stimulate uh, cancer cells, so we decided uh, that we would like to find some uh, some compounds that can be used as a hemoprevention or hemoprotection, some substances uh, that may slow or inhibit the consequences of uh, toxicity of uh, pesticides. So we focused uh, on phytochemicals mainly, substances which are present in plants, in fruits, vegetables, mm, some herbs, spices that have a modulation potential that is beneficial regarding uh, hemoprotection. Uh, those compounds, phytochemicals, can be divided into many groups, for example, terpenes, sulfates, phenols, organic acids, and many, many more. Here is an um, example of the division of phytochemicals with a special regard to polyphenols. And mechanism of, uh, mechanisms, different mechanisms of phytochemical action include uh, antioxidative effect, uh, xenobiotic detoxification through cytochrome uh, P450 activation, xenobiotic modification by inhibition of specific enzymes, regulation of gene expression during cell proliferation apoptosis, and modification of hormone receptors. 
And uh, in our department, we are focused on two groups of, um, of uh, plant compounds that can be used. We think that they can be used as a chemoprotection. One group is a group of uh, polyphenols and the other group is a group of plant hormones. So polyphenols, uh, it's a really a big group of compounds which can be divided into many groups. However, they are present uh, almost everywhere in the plant kingdom, in different fruits, vegetables, herbs, spices, chocolate, uh, olive oils, olives, uh, beer, coffee, tea, wine and other. And uh, in our department we were um, focused uh, on uh, two um, compounds from this group, caffeic acid, which is well-known antioxidant, and uh, cicoric acid, which is a um, um, close for me compound because I was working on this uh, compound. Uh, so cicoric acid um, exhibits um, uh, many biological properties, very positive biological properties. Uh, it protects uh, collagen from free radical damage and it, this compound has free <coughs> radical scavenging properties. Uh, so we decided to combine uh, two compounds, one from the group of uh, potential toxic compounds with the uh, compound from the group of potentially benefit uh, compounds like uh, like polyphenols. So uh, we conducted um, an experiment um, on uh, two cell lines. Uh, one is uh, uh, fibroblast, which uh, are normal healthy cells uh, from human skin. And uh, to compare, uh, we uh, decided to choose a skin cancer melanoma cell line A375. And first of all, we started with the uh, cytotoxicity assay to choose uh, concentrations of the compounds for the further studies. So uh, in this graph, uh, in these two graphs, uh, you may see uh, two cell lines here, fibroblasts and here uh, cancer cells, which were exposed to uh, graded concentrations of cicoric acid. So uh, in fibroblasts, we can see beneficial effect of cicoric acid, uh, which stimulated the relative viability of uh, healthy uh, cells, healthy fibroblasts. And on the other hand, uh, we can see here in cancer cells that cicoric acid uh, caused uh, significant uh, decreases uh, in uh, cancer cells viability. Uh, then we conducted experiments uh, on the cytotoxicity of uh, mesotrion, which is an example of pesticide which is being used in, uh, in Poland uh, very often. Uh, so uh, we can see here uh, decreases, so cytotoxic effect uh, of mesotrion in normal healthy cells. However, uh, we can see that the pesticide stimulated uh, skin cancer cells to proliferation. So, uh, based on uh, these results, uh, we decided to choose um, one the most stimulating concentration of mesotrion and combine it with the graded concentrations of cicoric acid. And uh, we wanted to, uh, to check the relative cell viability under the influence of the combination of these two compounds. And what what we can see here in fibroblasts, and cicoric acid was uh, able to overcome this uh, cytotoxic effect of mesotrion. And similarly, in, um, in cancer cells, in skin cancer cells, uh, cicoric acid was also able to induce decreases in uh, cancer cells viability, uh, even exposed to uh, mesotrion. Uh, we did also some uh, research in uh, oxidative stress parameters in these um, two uh, cell lines, fibroblasts and uh, melanoma. And uh, we analyzed uh, the um, lipid peroxidation process in two cell lines. Uh, here we can see results for fibroblasts where we can see that uh, mesotrion, of course, we, uh, we, uh, we, were, uh, we chose uh, one concentration for mesotrion, one concentration for cicoric acid. 
and the mixture of uh, these two compounds for the analysis. And we can see that mesotrione is uh, very stimulative uh, in case of lipid peroxidation in, um, in healthy cells and also in uh, cancer cells. Uh, however, um, tichoric acid uh, is able to lower this, uh, um, this process. Um, and uh, in case of uh, in case of skin cancer, the, the level of lipid peroxidation is uh, very very high under the influence of cicoric acid. Uh, we also studied uh, here uh, are the results uh, for the amount of reactive oxygen species, uh, which are confirmed by um, flow cytometry. Uh, we can see uh, that the level of uh, reactive oxygen species is very high under the influence of pesticide and is uh, lower under the influence of um, cicoric acid and the mixture of these two compounds. Uh, and we also studied uh, the amount of reduced glutathione ratio of reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione in both cell lines. And uh, we can see that the uh, decrease uh, under the influence of mesotrion in case of fibroblasts and increase in case of uh, melanoma cells. Uh, similarly, uh, results for uh, TL group uh, content. We also studied um, apoptosis process in both uh, cell lines and uh, we confirmed the results uh, for caspases activity uh, with the flow cytometry uh, analysis and um, we did this of course for fibroblasts and for, um, for melanoma, uh, for skin cancer cells. And what we can see that uh, in uh, cancer cells uh, we uh, can see a uh, decrease in um, activity of uh, caspases and uh, the results of flow cytometry uh, we can see that um, an increase in uh, apoptotic cells number under the influence of um, of pesticides in case of fibroblasts and in case of cancer cells uh, we can see decrease um, under the influence of mesotrine and under the influence of cicoric acid, we can see an increase in uh, apoptotic uh, cells. Here uh, is the graph presenting necrotic cells uh, in both um, cell lines. Uh, so the results with, this, uh, with the cicoric acid were so interesting for me that uh, for us, just uh, for our uh, group of uh, researchers, that we decided uh, to conduct the study regarding the um, possibilities of the prevention of doxorubicin toxicity with the use of cicoric acid. Uh, doxorubicin is an anti-cancer drug which is very toxic uh, so we wanted to, to, to study if it's possible to overcome the toxicity of this anti-cancer drug with the use of, uh, of cicoric acid. And uh, of course we started with uh, the basic cytotoxicity assays. Uh, we studied cells viability under the influence of cicoric acid. Uh, the cell line uh, was a normal healthy fibroblast from uh, skin tissue. Then we uh, exposed the cells to doxorubicin, uh, which was of course cytotoxic, and then uh, we exposed cells to the uh, mixture of these uh, two compounds. Uh, we then uh, decided to choose uh, the most active concentrations of doxorubicin, cicoric acid, and the combination of two compounds. We studied apoptosis process. Uh, we can see a um, really huge, uh, statistically significant increase uh, of the uh, activity of caspases 3, 7 and 9 uh, in case of doxorubicin, which uh, was, uh, we expected this. And uh, then uh, we can see the uh, uh, really low activity of caspases under the influence of cicoric acid. And we can see uh, a slight uh, difference between um, statistically insignificant in case of caspases 3-7 and uh, significant in case of caspases 9 uh, when the cells were treated with the mixture of these two compounds.
Uh, of course, we did uh, research uh, in oxidative stress parameters uh, for the cells exposed to doxorubicin, cicoric acid and the mixture of these two compounds. Um, so uh, we analyzed reactive oxygen species level and uh, of course uh, under the influence of doxorubicin uh, we see in both incubation times statistically significant increases in uh, reactive oxygen species amount uh, and uh, difference between uh, cells exposed to the mixture of compounds. Uh, similarly, uh, similar situation is here uh, when, where we can see lipid peroxidation process and uh, the amount of uh, malondialdehyde which is very high under the influence of doxorubicin but um, we can see a difference uh, in case of the treatment with doxorubicin and cicoric acid at the same time. Uh, we also studied, uh, of course, uh, the ratio of reduced glutathione to oxidized glutathione and your group content, uh, both uh, are correlated. Uh, so um, we can see a decrease, statistically significant decrease uh, in uh, the ratio of uh, reduced uh, glutathione to oxidized glutathione under the influence of doxorubicin. And of course, difference when we um, uh, when we treated cells with uh, cicoric acid. Uh, to uh, confirm uh, the results, uh, we did a flow cytometry analysis uh, uh, to analyze uh, the reactive uh, oxygen compounds amount. And we did also some uh, microscopic analysis, uh, fluorescent microscopy. So we exposed cells to selected concentrations of doxorubicin and uh, cicoric acid and the mixture of these two compounds. Clearly, we can see a lot of uh, apoptotic cells, red apoptotic cells under the influence of doxorubicin and uh, the, the level of apoptosis was significantly lower when cells were exposed also to uh, cicoric acid. The other group of compounds uh, that are under study is uh, there is a group of plant hormones. We focused on uh, cytokines mainly, uh, which um, play various roles in many aspects of plant uh, growth and development and they are so stimulative in a plant growth that uh, we were curious if it's possible to obtain uh, the same or similar effect in human cells like in uh, plant cells. Uh, so we decided to choose uh, three uh, cytokines, um, hormones uh, which are um, maybe known like kinetin, uh, benzyl adenine and traumatic acid. Uh, kinetin was, uh, there was a time when uh, this compound was very um, popular in Poland. Now it is not, I don't know why. It was a time even that it was being used in cosmetics. Now it's, it's not. Um, so uh, kinetin is a, a really strong antioxidant and um, this, uh, this compound is present in commercially available calf thymus DNA, in freshly extracted DNA from human cells, in culture, of course in plant uh, cell extracts and even in human urine. And so benzyl adenine is a, um, is a, a hormone which um, play important role in uh, cell cycle. And the third, uh, which is most interesting especially for me, uh, is traumatic acid, uh, which is not very popular. Uh, I found only one uh, group of people that works in Italy on uh, traumatic acid. Uh, it is very uh, unpopular cytokinin and the structure, chemical structure is totally different because uh, this is a derivative of unsaturated fatty acids and uh, traumatic acid and its uh, derivative which is called traumatin are present in the places uh, where um, plants have some wounds so uh, therefore they are called wound hormones. So we were curious if it's possible Mm, to apply uh, this, uh, this compound, um, for example, on cell culture and to see if 
it's able to, to stimulate the proliferation of, of human cells like it stimulates the proliferation of plant cells. And we did some research with this, uh, with this compound on normal healthy uh, skin fibroblasts and breast cancer. Um, uh, we did analysis uh, with the fibroblasts, we analyzed oxidative stress parameters and also we did some collagen assay uh, in order to check if um, this uh, compound is able to stimulate the production of um, very important uh, protein from the point of view of skin. And uh, also we wanted to see if it has any anti-cancer properties. So we did uh, assays for oxidative stress, apoptosis and cell proliferation with the use of um, MCF7 breast cancer cell line. And uh, we saw that uh, traumatic acid in fibroblast stimulates uh, the biosynthesis of collagen. And it also acts as a stimulator of oxidative stress in uh, cancer cells to a, such a high level that it has some, uh, we may say in general, some anti-cancer properties. Uh, this uh, compound caused a decrease in lipid peroxidation and it exhibited protective properties against free radicals in healthy cells. Uh, it stimulated collagen biosynthesis uh, in healthy cells. However, in um, cancer cells, it exhibited anti-cancer properties. Therefore, we did uh, also uh, a big study uh, based only on uh, cytotoxicity analysis. Uh, we um, decided to choose uh, four uh, cell lines, three of them um, breast cancer, and um, expose them to four um, pesticides and uh, combined uh, with a traumatic acid to see if uh, this uh, compound is able to overcome the uh, toxicity of uh, pesticides. Uh, we have different results and um, you may find them, they are published uh, of course and open access so it's possible to, to just uh, check the results because there is a, a big um, statistical analysis, uh, but the results are promising. I cannot uh, say that uh, we are sure for 100% that rheumatic acid is able to overcome the toxicity of pesticides, but we can see some light. <laughs> And, and finally, uh, we also did some research regarding the um, activity of fungicides as a potential endocrine disruptive compounds with the use of, um, of two uh, breast cancer cell lines, uh, MCF7 and T47D K blood which were chosen through to their response to estradiol and those uh, fungicides that are uh, under that were under study uh, like boscalid cyprodinyl and iprodion they are commonly uh, used in poland uh, in order to protect crops against fungi and uh, what we can see here um, the results of uh, cells viability cells um, MCF7 cell line incubated with different concentration of uh, estrogen as a, a positive control and um, cells were also incubated with um, pesticides and pesticides combined with tamoxifen uh, which is anti-cancer drug uh, which were used in order to block estrogen receptors in uh, these uh, cells because we wanted to analyze if the uh, those fungicides may act uh, through the pathway based on uh, estrogen re receptors. Uh, we did an uh, e-screen assay uh, where we uh, were um, analyzing uh, maximum prolif proliferative effects induced by um, all this um, all these uh, fungicides in MCF7 cells. Uh, of course, we um, we uh, did the exposition of cells to uh, to fungicide, to fungicide combined with estrogen and combined with tamoxifen, and we did uh, analysis um, of the uh, also oxidative stress parameters. But we were focused mainly on uh, reactive oxygen species uh, in uh, two. Uh, cell lines, breast cancer cell lines, and um, we analyzed also relative uh, gene expression, uh, genes responsible for uh, for the um, 
antioxidative uh, enzymes activity, glutathione peroxidase, uh, catalyze and uh, dismutase, sodium dismutase. And we saw that um, there was a stimulation of, uh, of antioxidative enzymes and an increase in uh, reactive oxygen species under the influence of selected concentrations of, of uh, those three fungicides. Uh, we also uh, studied um, uh, the penetration of the fungicides into the cells uh, because we wanted to check if it's uh, if they really penetrate into the cells. So, uh, um, in the cooperation with our chemists, um, our chemists did uh, analysis. Uh, so they checked. Uh, the uh, presence of, of these fungicides in uh, two concentrations each, the most stimulating concentrations, uh, the, their presence within the cell. And what we found out that the, the lower concentration of pesticides, the, uh, the, the higher amount of the pesticides entered the cells. So it is rather bad news for us. And uh, we also conduct some research with the use, of course, of fluorescent microscope to analyze uh, the um, possible apoptosis. And of course, uh, like we expected, um, we couldn't see uh, almost any apoptotic cells under the influence of uh, pesticides, uh, fungicides. What are the conclusion? Uh, that the studied uh, fungicides caused a significant increase in cancer cells uh, viability and proliferation and the sogenic activity was present in all studied compounds and uh, oxidative stress activated probably uncontrolled cancer cell proliferation by inducing um, maybe this we, we we suspect that this could be the, the pathway uh, by inducing uh, free radicals production and inhibiting uh, antioxidant defense. And our findings uh, verified that the suggested fungicides could possibly exhibit endocrine disruptive properties. So these are our uh, um, some of our research papers. And, uh, and that's all what I wanted to say. <laughs> so if you have any questions, Thank you.